everybody, welcome back to the Jen Sui YouTube channel with me, Jen. I hope you're all okay. We are going to carry on the light and sound theme that we've got going on for this month with essentially a mini projector using things that you've probably got hanging around at home or at school. So I'll whack up what you need on the screen now and then talk you through it. Now I've used these before in the past but to be honest I completely forgot about these until my lovely friend Nick Sheffield did it in one of his videos and I suddenly thought oh my goodness I should put that on Gentry I haven't done one of those but they are so good it's such a simple way of being able to project images onto walls and umbrellas and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've done a lot of trial and error with this one so it did go a little bit wrong to start off with but I'm hoping I can share my mistakes with you so that if you're thinking some of the things that I thought when I was trialing this I'm going to save you the effort and just tell you the easiest, quickest, best way of doing it right from the outset. <laughs> Okay, so to make our mini projector, we are going to use a tube. This is a kitchen roll tube and a torch. Now you can just use a torch if you've got one, um, but a lot of people don't have torches actually in their houses anymore because your phone usually has one on. And this is a really ancient iPhone that I had hanging around. Um, this one doesn't have a torch built in. A lot of phones just have torches kind of as an app. Uh, already built in with them but this one has it on the video setting so if you go into video um, as though you're just going to take a little movie and then click on the permanent flash it will just give you a flash on the back and then you can use that to shine through your tube so that alone will give you a light essentially almost like a little circular disc so you can make your room super super dark um, and you've got already quite an interesting light that you can move around. Again, like I say about projection umbrellas all the time or a dark umbrella, you can enclose the space for your learner um, and do a little bit of light play just with that if you want to. That's kind of an easier way of getting a nice little circular disc. Now to gentrify this up a little bit, what we can then do is pop things in front of that light to create essentially projections onto a wall or onto a dark umbrella um, just to create a little bit of visual focus and essentially awe and wonder. So what you need to be able to do that is a laminating pouch. So just a blank one, standard laminating pouch, whack it through your laminator um, and it will come out the other side as a piece of plastic. Acetate, just clear acetate will work even better but if you haven't got any acetate, yeah, just whack a laminating pouch through. Word of advice here, don't just put it through your laminator and think it will happily come out the other side because there's been nothing rigid to hold it in place. Your laminator will chew it up into a concertina mess um, and you might break your laminator. Now I'm saying this from experience, so if you are just feeding through your laminator pouch, yeah, watch it like a hawk because I've learned the hard way about that one. Now when you've got your laminating sheet, you can essentially do some little doodles on it. Um, so they can be part of a theme or a topic or whatever you want. Um, and then when that's put in the light, that will project that onto the wall um, instead of just your light. So the possibilities for this are endless really. Um, I'm just going to show you a few little ways that I've done it um, just to kind of give you a few ideas.
as with most of the ideas on Gen3, I'm going to try and give you lots of different ways that you can use this with different styles of learners um, and different developmental ages. So if you've got learners that are working early developmentally, um, you're looking at vision as the main kind of Thing here. You're not necessarily looking at recognising things and telling stories particularly, although you can bring that in if you want to kind of make it more inclusive in your class. Um, but actually it's about zoning into their senses and about that focus and that attention span. So you can just do it as the light if you want to. Um, so just seeing if they can zone into where that is. You can do some tracking with it. You can do some start and stop. So you can bring an image in, whatever that may be, see if they can focus on it, then put it away again and build up those anticipation skills of it reappearing and going and reappearing and going. Um, that's a really nice thing to do. You can put fireworks on it. Um, you can put some sound effects in the background if you wanted a bit more of a multi-sensory experience. Um, but yeah, at that early developmental stage, you're just looking at that ability to locate with their vision. Um, and actually, you might want to bring that quite close to them, because it might be that they don't have distant vision um, very well. So you might want to bring an umbrella around. I talk about like creating that nook, um, so you don't get lots and lots of visual clutter. You can just create a really dark background with a kind of projection umbrella, and just do a little bit of tracking side to side um, that's nice and close to them. So yeah, I'd highly recommend just creating a little dark space if you've got learners with um, PMRD or visual impairments or working at those early developmental levels. That's probably the fundamentally easiest way to do it. If you've got learners that are doing a story though, for example, um, you'll see that I just did a little tracing here of the owl from the Gruffalo just to kind of show you what I mean. So that's just going to enhance your story. So you can again use a sort of black background or um, a white wall, anything that you've got like that and just use it to tell the story. So you can either do sort of individual ones like that um, or you can actually draw them all on one sheet and then just slowly move them as you're telling the story. Um, on its own that's just going to be a lovely awe and wonder way of telling a story that's just going to create a little bit more focus so if you've got learners that are struggling with attention span um, it might be just a nice novel way of really captivating them in in a nice sensory way and then following on from that if you've got learners that are doing early mark making what a really exciting way of essentially putting on their own version of the story so you could give them a sheet of lamina or acetate give them some sharpies and let them kind of draw their own version let them map out their own little version of the story and then they can put on a little show for their friends or you as a teacher or a parent um, and just move the light around and see if they can just tell the story and recognize the characters and um, give a little bit of kind of meaning to the marks that they're making so for example, if you are doing the Gruffalo or something, you can get them to do some wiggly lines for the snake. You could get them to do some like footprint dots for the Gruffalo or some angry kind of marks. But actually that's just gonna be a little bit of a more interesting way of bringing stories to life um, and bringing mark making to life for them. So yeah, if you've got kind of higher developmental learners, it's actually really great for them too. Now just before I go, if you're watching this video and thinking, ah, don't have any Sharpies, I do have some felt pens in my pencil case, however, that'll work. Telling you now, it won't. Um, you won't get the vivid colours and you won't get the clarity of image when you project it, so you do need permanent markers. Also, for some reason that I'm still not entirely sure of, I thought it would be a good idea to maybe draw with felt pens onto a laminated sheet and then laminate it as though laminating was gonna somehow make the colors more vivid um, or just kind of seal in the image somehow. I'm not entirely sure what was going through my head at the time. Um, essentially all that happened is all of the felt pen ink just bled. So I just got melted versions of Ruffalo characters, um, which obviously wasn't ideal at all. So to save you uh, the effort of trialing that idea, I wouldn't advise it at all. Um, get yourself some Sharpies. You can get them quite cheaply online now, actually. Um, and yeah, just draw on it when it's laminated so you don't get melted images. And that's it, really. Cardboard tube, Sharpies, torch, acetate or laminated pouches. And you can just go to town. Um, and what a great way of celebrating children's individual marks. What a great way of celebrating what they can do. What a great empowering activity to do for all kinds of learners. Um, 
and actually who doesn't love a little bit of a kind of theatre show so yeah I hope you have loads of fun with it always let me know if you use it and if it's been successful um, it really makes my day genuinely to hear when learners are benefiting from these because that's what Gen3 is all about if you like the video today please do give it a thumbs up down below and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so i will see you next time for the final part of the light and sound theme but until then take care everybody and i'll see you soon